anarchy in the arena. Kenny, we got to talk about this, especially because I think we have a bit of a separate, you know, point of view when it comes to this match, because I feel like this is a circus show. I feel like this is a clown show. I feel like this is crazy. I feel like this should not be your main event of the evening, especially over Swerve Strickland, who desperately needs a big victory, a big moment to establish him as the top guy, as your champion, because ever since he won that thing, what have you been doing with him, man? Instead of that, instead of doing that, this is your main event. Darby Allen going out there, going crazy with a broken nose, breaking it again somehow. It's crazy. How is this man still alive? <laughs> Look, I will give this match this. Anarchy in the arena, that's what they advertised and that's what they gave us. It was absolutely that's anarchy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what they gave us. I will give you that. But, you know, one comparison we made is like, uh, you know... Uh, I can never look at these wrestlers the same because imagine your dad is like this really masculine guy and he's always there for you and he's always the great dude. And then one day, just for one day, out of millions of days, you see him in a dress. Just for one day, just for 10 seconds. And then it's like, oh. Dads can wear dresses if they want to. Of course, of course. <laughs> but then, you know, your perception of it kind of changes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel you. I get it, bro. I get it. But you are absolutely insane. Come on, man. Because this match, now now listen, you made a few great points there. I do agree that the world champion has to end the show. Mm -hmm. Has If it's the woman's championship, if that's what you're pushing, fine. But one of your main championships has to end the show. And in this case, they took that from Swerve Strickland. Now, I was talking to Omer from Real Take Wrestling. Real and he said Stadium Stampede or Antioch Green Arena, that always closes the show. It's like the main event. Whatever. Royal Rumble, uh, Money in the Bank Royal type Rumble. stuff. Yeah, you know what? I get it. But in this case, if, if that's the case, put your champion in that match and have yeah. him represent one team leading against the bad team. You could have done it that way. You protect your champion. So that's the only part I didn't like about it. But this match was absolutely insane. And you know what? I loved the beauty of the insanity. <laughs> when they first announced this match, it kind of took me out of it because I was like, what? Brian Danielson, FTR, and Eddie Kingston? But do you know what? Adding Darby Allen into this match absolutely saved it because he gave us some of the craziest spots of the night. And I just don't know how this thing would have gone if uh, we didn't have Darby Allen. But, Kiddo, I want to talk about some of the points in this match. Oh, yeah? Because I just don't see why you – I don't see how you can see this in any other way. So one thing – I'm not going to go in any order here. I'm just going to talk about him from what I remember. First off, we saw um, Jack Perry almost get drowned, right? <laughs> yeah, almost Come in on, a man. ice, whatever. Yeah. Yes, but after that, we saw Jack Perry put – Darby Allen was in some type of contraption. Yeah. Jack Perry got in this truck and ran them over. He killed the man on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about spots? What do you think about spots like that? So you think there's – that makes them all look like clowns. I – I gotta be honest, kind of, because, like, I like anarchy, I like having fun in my wrestling, but, like, you need those uh, ground rules established, and you don't want to get away from those, and, like, you know, the, my number one problem with AEW might be those referees who just let everything happen. Now, obviously, this is a no-DQ match, but, like, you know, any good comedian or uh, co comedy movie needs that straight man where, you know, like, these are the rules, these are the strict rules, so it's funny once you, you know, get out of them, and, like, when it's AEW, you look at the rest of the matches too. You just had like a barbed wire match, crazy match anyways. It's like this match is uh, it's the same exact thing, I guess, turned into a 200. It's absolutely ridiculous. And like, it makes me feel like I'm watching Fast and the Furious, right? Like that's great movies, great movies, I guess. Fun to watch, but like I turn off my brain and like, I really don't care about them that much, right? I just treat them as like one and done. Uh, this is the same thing as well. I mean, AEW has been treating this storyline so far the same as well, but like, it's not special to me. It could have been special, like an edited era type thing or like a, even, you know, crazier. Um, but like when they beat up Tony Khan, that was amazing. I really wanted to see what they were going to do next. This... We'll get I, back to that. I, I don't know. You know what we I mean? This is like a one night thing and like and the amount of injuries you could have had. I mean, Darby Allen again, like, he got messed up again. I guess Darby Allen, he's a special case. He's invincible. I guess he'll be okay. But, like, yeah. um, you have Okada out there doing this thing. Like, we're supposed to be able to, you know, see him as a big star. And I don't see any of these guys as big stars when they do stuff like this. It just, <laughs> I hate to say it. Well, I hate to say it, but like Brian Kittle, it proves Brian CM Punk was right. 
Oh, come on, man. man. My goodness. Here we go. Come on, the man. The Cena Punk was not right, bro. Everybody loved this match universally. When I was looking on X, everybody was enjoying it. It's just mm -hmm. y'all WWE guys. Y'all just. God. Now, I got to ask you because I got to challenge you on that because you said you hold this against AEW. Yeah. And once they do something like this, you see the guys as clowns and they can never recover. Yeah. How do you feel about Seth Rollins? and Bray Wyatt oh ho, ho. man I, I gave them the same same shtick man 2019 oh, still a clown. he's still a clown people hate me for saying it but yeah like even after all they did with uh Wrestlemania 41 was it we're getting old right now why is there so many Wrestlemanias the way he came out for that Drew McIntyre match is like dancing like if you only were a little bit more serious and if only Bray Wyatt was to beat uh, The Undertaker back then at WrestleMania. If you only were to beat Goldberg, like, instead of that, you had the, you know, goofy Mountain Dew match. Like, he's been not... He's just treated so wrong in the WWE. He has been treated so wrong in WWE. So, I say the same thing to the WWE man as well. Like, um, Jack Perry, I want to see him as this new star. But, like, you have... Him basically doing what he was doing five years ago when this company started is in the exact same place right now. Like, uh, I want to see more character from him. I know he can go do crazy stuff. I know every single person here can do crazy stuff. But where's the character? What excites me about Jack Perry is that he's been exiled, right? Now he has this chance to get a much more of an edge to him and, like, get a new character that will push him to the main event status. He um, has it. He has it? He has that character. Now, listen, Jack Perry, they're definitely giving him something because after he ran over Darby Allen, killed him, <laughs> we assume we saw, they showed him coming back to the stage. He went to the gorilla position, very, very moist. Yeah. I guess from the ice bath he still had, he was very moist. And he came, walked to the stage and grabbed Tony Khan like when nobody expected it. He snatched him up and took him to the stage, beating him up even more. That is Jack Perry's character now. He's going against the system. He's the guy, much like Stone Cold, who hates the boss, and he's the only person who's going to put his hands on the boss. So I did not hate this at all. Now, yeah, we saw him get on fire before, but this time he got lit on fire with a flamethrower <laughs> from Darby Allen. Come on, man. This was a great spot that we never saw in wrestling. I don't know where I've ever seen this at before, but they literally let a man on fire, lit a man on fire on the wrestling stage. So you're saying you didn't find any enjoyment out of that? No, I told you the like i'll enjoy it i'll turn my brain off i'll look at it as fast and furious and those oh, things were nice it. but we need substance you know what i mean we need substance that's that's all i'm asking for and with this storyline they really had a chance to keep people coming back you know what i mean like um if they are consistent with it that's another thing i should say this is nowhere near over this is the first paper with this feud i think um but, like, um, they're going to go ahead and do this Tony Khan thing, this Jack Perry thing, make it continue for a whole year. That's how it feels like to me. So I'm not going to go ahead and give it a final verdict just yet. Uh, but, man, like, you know, you need you need moments. You need big moments. These were moments. I mean, That's sure. That's exactly what they gave us, but moments. how did it put Jack Perry over? You know what it I mean? It put Jack Perry over because, for one, they, they did a lot of character building here. Jack Perry grabbing Tony oh, Khan yeah? and bringing him to the stage so he can beat him up. That builds on top of Jack Perry's character. But we look at what they did with Darby Allen as well. Darby Allen is an unhinged, crazy man. So him shooting that flamethrower at Jack Perry, that's kind of using Jack Perry as the subject, but it's putting Darby Allen over in that case because it's showing you how crazy Darby is where he'll light somebody on fire. So you're doing character work and kind of building up all these guys at the same time. That's why I think it was just like a beautiful mess they were having out there. And Tony Khan, the, the, while this was going on, they threw him down the stage. Kittle, you know what? Let's go ahead and risk monetization. Can you please show us Tony Khan rolling down that stage? because that shows us uh, Jack Perry's character more than anything. But while you're getting that pulled up, so um, Darby yeah. Allen, after he got ran over, he came twerking down to the ring. Twerking and they down. they beat the brakes off of this man a lot more. And then they brought a hook from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> and as that they were bringing that hook down, they tied it to, I mean, of course, some things happened in between this, but they ended up tying it to Darby Allen and hanging him upside down. Now, we know Darby Allen got hit by a bus. <laughs> How does this happen? I have 
absolutely no idea but this man got hit by a bus and walked away with a broken nose that's why he came out with the mask with thumbtacks all over it because he's a crazy man again yeah and this is just the way we're selling see it. man that's all him. cgi man that's all cgi and not a lot of substance the story that's what we're looking for man that's all they need to do they don't need to do this crazy stuff because but that's what the match is. It's anarchy in the arena. <sighs> Look at this. <laughs> Let's get our boy Tony Rowland. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. We got to see that one more time. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> and he's just run away from the ring? I guess so. I guess he had to get out of the camera shot and he's run like to a the side. Shinobi. Hey, uh, man. Yeah, he's Assassin's right, Creed. Man. He doesn't. He just doesn't have... Maybe that can be his gimmick. He's just a goofy guy because he always comes <laughs> off as goofy when he's I doing I mean, look, this stuff. is your main event. Imagine, you know what I mean? It's anarchy, bro. It's it's like, it's mayhem. It's just, come on, man. This It, it was a beautiful it was a beautiful thing. Sometimes you need this type of stuff in wrestling. And doing it one time per year, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But um, they pulled Jack Perry, not Jack Perry. They pulled Darby Allin upside down, hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> And again, this man's nose like is already broken. Mm. You said from what? Like a fish. Yes, yes. Hanging just like a fish on a uh, rod. But they got these shoes that had the thumbtacks on the bottom of them like we've seen before. Yeah. Took his mask off and they super kicked this man in the face. Now you think like, oh, it's smoking mirrors. Of course they didn't hit him with it. But Darby Allen posted a picture today of his broken yeah. nose that was all mangled and tore up with yeah. thumbtack holes in it. So he really did take this kick. And not only did he take that kick, they kept him suspended above the ring for like 10 minutes until they got to the finish. But um, just to point out the finish here before we get out of here, kiddo, Jack Perry was the man who got the pin over Brian Danielson. Yeah. You can't tell me that's big for Jack. That's that is huge for Jack Perry's career. That shows they see him as the guy because you had three other guys who could have got that pin, but they chose Jack Perry to pin Brian Danielson. If so a this tree guy falls is gonna be a big deal in AEW. In the jungle and nobody hears about that tree falling. Does that tree is it did it, did it really fall? That's my question. Like People who, heard about it. People heard about who it. Who remembers that, Kenny? Honest question. Me. After when I saw it, I was like, ah. They see it in Jack Perry, and he's going to move forward. Yo, Jack Perry and MJF could be our feud. We got two pillars who are actually successful going up against each other, and we see Darby Allen. He's like a different pillar. He's like that Mick Foley type pillar. Sammy I think Guevara is going to have to come with it. But, Sammy I mean, Guevara is out of there, Perry's man. The right, he's, he's canceled. He's on the right pace. He's canceled. Canceling Sammy Guevara? I think so. I think Tony Khan is going to cancel him. Maybe we can talk about that too, because yeah. um, Mercedes Monet, Sammy Guevara. Ooh, another video, bro. ever since she's another been here, video. Sammy Guevara. I mean, yeah, it coincided it's with gone. Jeff, but that's another video. Now, <sighs> I like this stuff. It feels like kind of to me like the Attitude Era, Jeff Hardy, Team 3D yes. type of stuff. But that was not the main event of WrestleMania. That's what I'm trying to say. This, this has a place in wrestling. Just book it better and make it more make more sense. You know what I mean? And again, uh, when you put it at the main event, when you present it the way you do, like a lot of my friends... This is the reason why they, you know, quote unquote, see this as the second rate company or, you know, a whole circus show and stuff like that. But it's all about the presentation because I think, again, the presentation they, was beautiful here. Okay, fair enough. I just got to say. Let's agree to disagree. Do, Do I, you give yeah. this match thumbs up or thumbs down? Oh, man. I'm going to have to go. It was crazy, like I said, but it's a thumbs down. I'm going thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section what y'all thought about this match because I think my boy here, Kiddo, has lost his mind. Thank y'all for tuning in.